The Pilot Vanishing Point was first introduced in 1963 and was marketed as the world's first capless fountain pen. In fact, in Japan, this model is still referred to as the Pilot Capless. It went through many different iterations over the last 60 years. This latest one was introduced in 1998, um, and it's offered in many different finishes. The one here today is called Matte Black. The overall shape does not look much like a regular fountain pen, but shares more in common with your typical click rollerball pen. At the bottom, we have a long button that's used to extend and retract the nib. Then there's a small piece that transitions to the main barrel. The barrel is divided into two pieces and is separated by two rings that have a polished finish. At the bottom of the top barrel, we have the words Pilot and Japan. And then there's a slight taper up to this top piece that has a slight step down. And then the nib comes out of this top point. On the other side, we have a nice functional clip that matches the rest of the pen body. It's not spring-loaded, but it is springy and functional. And towards the top, it has a little bit of a pinched design to help with holding the pen. In the hand, the pen is fairly ergonomic, but it's not extremely comfortable, and it does have a little bit of heft because the pen is made out of mainly brass. To extend the nib, we press on this back button. If we look at the front side, there's a little flap that comes down and then the nib comes out. The nib is on the small side, but it's a nice 14 karat gold nib. It's offered in white, yellow, and black, which we have here today. And on the back, we have a very small plastic feed. Pushing the button again, the pen, the nib comes out a little bit and then comes back in and that flap follows the nib back. In terms of size comparisons, here we have the Pilot Vanishing Point, a typical Pilot G2 rollerball pen, and your standard Sharpie. It's important to note that the clip position on the Vanishing Point is different than your typical rollerball pen. To disassemble the Vanishing Point, unscrew the barrel where it splits. The back barrel contains the knock unit, which is not easy to disassemble, so I would leave that alone. The front barrel contains the nib unit, and inside is a trapped spring, which is nearly impossible to take out. What I recommend for cleaning is to either submerge this in water or run it through a ultrasonic cleaner. The nib is attached to the feed with four small ears. The feed seems to be made of a very fragile plastic, so I would not recommend separating this, and I would just leave this be. And then included with the unit is a CON40 converter. Now you have the pen fully disassembled. Before we reassemble it, I'd like to take a closer look at this CON40 converter. The Pilot CON40 leaves much to be desired. Not only does it have a bunch of agitators that effectively turn your pen into a maraca, but the piston doesn't extend anywhere near the tip. What this means is it's nearly impossible to get a full fill. But don't blame this poor converter, it's not its fault. The issue stems from how Pilot designed their cartridges. You see, most cartridges use a small plastic tip with a membrane to keep the ink in. Inserting a feed into that membrane punctures it and allows ink to flow through. Pilot decided to do it differently. Instead, Pilot recessed a small disc to keep the ink in. And at the bottom of every Pilot section is a rounded rib that gets inserted into the cartridge and pushes the disc. Which works fine in theory, but what that means is any converter also needs to be able to clear that same rib. Another issue with trying to use a converter to fill up the Pilot vanishing point is the fact that the inlet for the ink is at the very bottom of this feed which is quite a ways down past the nib. So you end up needing a very deep ink bottle in order to get a decent fill. So for those reasons, I do not recommend using a converter on the Pilot Vanishing Point. Instead, what I recommend doing is eyedroppering the cartridge. In order to do this, you'll need something to hold the cartridge up. And you'll wanna make sure that the disc is vertical inside the cartridge. Either that, or you could take a pliers and pull it out altogether. We'll set the cartridge down. 
take our handy syringe. In this case, I'm using Waterman Intense Black. Drop some ink. Carefully insert it into your cartridge and eject it down. You may need to do this a few times in order to get a full fill. That's pretty good. <clears throat> now we'll take our nib unit, push the cartridge into it, and you can take a piece of paper towel and a cup and invert the nib inside of it. Now we're gonna just let it sit here and wait for the ink to start flowing through. Okay, the nib has been sitting there for a few minutes and I'm starting to see some ink pooling at the bottom of the paper towel. So we're ready to reassemble. If you look closely on the uh, nib unit, there is a little notch. That notch goes into this slot that's on the um, top barrel. And then Pilot provided a sleeve to put over the converter in order to protect the back of it from the knocking unit. I don't really find that it's necessary. Um, if I do start seeing some damage on the convert on the cartridge, I'll just go ahead and replace it. Screw the two ends together and we're ready to write. Okay, writing with the pilot vanishing point. Use the back button to extend the nib. This nib is a 14 karat gold fine. When I initially got this nib, it wrote a little bit dry. Uh, the line was a, a little bit too fine for me, but it also sang, which is a strange phenomenon where when you're writing, basically the tines start vibrating back and forth and they produce a harmonic frequency that's audible. Um, and it, it's a kind of like a soft whisper. So it's not anything to really be concerned about. It can be a little bit annoying in meetings. Um, what I ended up doing was I very carefully spread the tines apart and that helped with ink flow, but it also made the nib quiet. Our ink, we have Waterman Intense Black. I've been using Waterman Intense Black a lot lately. You may have noticed that if you're watching this channel. I find that it's a very nicely saturated ink and it's also well lubricated, so it ends up performing well in a lot of pens. Um, in terms of line variation, it's a pretty stiff nib. If you push it a little bit, you will get a little bit of line variation, but I wouldn't consider it a flex nib by any means. And then for reverse writing, it's actually quite smooth um, and it is a lot thinner than your front way. However, it also gets very dry. In fact, this tea got washed out completely. So I would not consider this a good reverse writer. So what do I think of the Pilot Vanishing Point? Well, it's been in production for nearly 60 years. So at this point, it's a very iconic pen. As I mentioned, it doesn't really share many similarities in design with other fountain pens and looks a lot more like your typical rollerball pen. And that's not by mistake. This pen was first introduced right as rollerballs were getting popular. So Pilot was trying to capture that market share. Um, in terms of 
the usability of this pen, I find it is a little bit ergonomic, mainly because of this clip placement um, and having this pinched design. However, it's not the most comfortable pen for long writing. After about two minutes, my hands will start cramping up and my fingers will start moving up and down trying to find a comfortable spot on the pen. I kind of wish they would have tapered the barrel a little bit more so that it was more similar to this um, Moonman TI 500, which has a much more narrow shape. Because if you look at the profile of the Pilot, it's pretty blocky. But this pen's use case, I would not say is for journalists and people who do long writing sessions. The purpose of this pen is if you're in a meeting, pick it up, click the nib extended and jot a quick note. It is almost the perfect pen when it comes to just needing a quick note or being on the go. The only other issue I have with this pen is the filling system. Um, as we looked at, the Con 40 converter is really has a lot of room for improvement. Um, but not just that. The feed, having its inlet so far down, makes it very limited as to which bottles and inks you can use with this pen. What I wish Pilot would have done is maybe make this knock mechanism a little bit um, shorter so that you would have room for the Con 70 converter. And then with the nib and feed, maybe also make the nib a little bit shorter so that you can move this inlet closer to the tip. But besides that, it is, as I mentioned, a very iconic pen, not a good long-term writer, but a great note taker. So that just leaves me to say, Thank you for watching.